Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time again with Carly, Call of Darkness. Episode 3. Amala sees a terrifying vision she can't explain. Sana the servant warns her of the looming warns her of the looming danger. She already did an episode one. What you mean? Alright, shock me. Episode 3, The Vision. This episode contains description of physical violence. Okay. So for those who can't stand physical violence or are like a little sensitive. If you don't feel comfortable with reading that, then just skip that part. The maid sent by the hotel manager opened the door of the diplomat's room for us. Come in, please. I could tell she was uncomfortable around us. She was hesitant and avoided eye contact. I didn't have time to dwell on it, though. I was only focused on work. Ugh, oh, it's so hot in here. True. It's tough enough to pass out. Open windows, please. Right away, sir. The maid rushed to the windows at the end of the room and began opening them one by one. The maid wasn't joking when she said hi as wouldn't air the room. It's like renaissance. <laughs> I can't imagine living here. His paranoia must have really gotten out of hand if he slept in such a hot and stale room just to avoid opening the windows. Or he was terrified. I looked around the room. We haven't found anything strange. Yet. But I am still young. Let's take a look around. We need to examine... His diary. I'm intrigued. I notice a small book in the nightstand. I think that's his diary. Let's look through it. It'll be interesting to learn what Hayes' thoughts were. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Liam and I walked over to the nightstand with the diary. I heard Rayton's voice as I touched the smooth leather cover. You should look through it. I saw him use that diary. You saw him use it? Yes, as I said, the diplomat requested not to be accompanied. He asked to be briefed about staying in Calcutta, a rule book of sorts. He wrote it all down in his diary. I picked up the small book and opened it. The first thing I saw was the record of some meetings in the diplomat had in London. I started flipping through the pages. <laughs> not important, not important, not important. Ah, this one is something. Let me stop. A few pages in, I got to the part where Mr. Hayes listed the safety rules for India. Don't walk the streets at night. Avoid the Calcutta slums. Don't go inside a temple with your shoes on. Nothing strange so far. What's this? Lima immediately appeared next to me. We both noticed tiny shreds of paper still attached to the binding. A page had been roughly torn out. It tore out a page. Doesn't that seem weird to you? Furiously tore it out at that. And again. And again. I started looking through the diary. Every third page had been ripped out. Lima raised her eyebrows in surprise. I think someone was in there and ripped out the pages. I started looking through the diary. Every third page had been ripped out. Lima raised her eyebrows in surprise. Did Hayes do that? I seriously doubt it. Why would he want to get rid of his own records? I looked around the room, wearily running my hand over my neck. This looks bad. Let's take it with us. I opened my purse and carefully put the diary inside it. I read it at home, in a quieter setting. Moving on. We need to examine his personal belongings. I want to take a look at his desk. I wonder if he left anything there. That's a good idea, Miss Khan. The team slowly scattered around the room. I walked over to the modest desk, not far from the bed. There was nothing on it 
Apart from a desk lamp, I opened a drawer and found a stack of papers. Well, well. Documents. These are his documents. I turned around and saw Killian standing behind me, carefully examining the contents of the drawer. His passport, embassy ID, even his health insurance. He wouldn't just flee and leave everything behind, would he? No, he wouldn't. It's weird, then. Where could he have gone without his documents and for so long? Killian crossed his arms over his chest, staring into the distance. He was deep in thought. Do you have any ideas? The doom is gone. Not very optimistic, I'm afraid. Well, that's fine, because I'm not an optimist. I'm a pessimist. And I'm a realist. So, bring it in. You don't think... Nothing specific yet. However, I wouldn't count on a good outcome for our case. Hmm, more tragic. I pursed my lips and walked away from the desk. I looked at something else. We're gonna examine the bathroom. Do you think it's worth checking the bathroom? Yes, that's a good idea. I can help if you want. Aww. I looked at Killian and Lima, who were discussing something by the window. Mr. Rose was also busy. Sure, let's go. Be there for me, sir. Come on. We entered the sparsely furnished room. There were no personal belongings. Expect for a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a brush on the sink. There is not much to see. Yes, just a toothbrush and a brush. I nodded as I silently repeated Wrighton's words to myself. Then I frowned. Wait, a toothbrush and a brush. Those are toiletries. That's right. And they are still here. Where would a diplomat go without his toothbrush? Well, he could easily buy a new one. That, Rayton. True, but something doesn't add up. We need to put the pieces together to be able to see the full picture. Let's go back. Redlin led me out first and followed me out of the room. Like a gentleman. We need to examine. There's nothing more to examine. What else would we look at? Seems like we've covered everything. I agree. Let's regroup to think about the case. So, what have we got here? His ideas and documents are here. Several pages have been roughly torn out from his diary. His toiletries are also here. It's almost as if he just stepped out for a bit and is about to come back. But he disappeared, and we haven't heard from him in, in about a week. Hold up, people. L let me just uh, um, put a theory out there. Uh, perhaps I was a little slow in understanding it, but the first scene that we saw, someone was being um, sacrificed, like a blood sacrifice, by some creepy dude. We didn't know what he was, what he looked like, but we knew that it was a guy. And an old guy was begging for his life, but he was sacrificed in the end. Is it possible that that was the person we're looking for? That's the mis uh, biologist or whatever he is. I forgot it again. I'm so sorry. Could it be possible that he uh, that the one we're looking for was the one in the first scene when we started this story? The one that got sacrificed in that ritual? The diary is confusing me. The pages were ripped out as if someone wanted to destroy whatever was written on them. Sounds plausible. If so, then the disappearance of the diplomat. It's a diplomat, okay. Could it be possible that it was the diplomat? I think so. It was not an accident. It was calculated. This is bad. This is very bad for us. Wasn't an accident? Are you saying that something happened to him? I have a few other ideas as well. For example, maybe he suddenly got into Hindisumus, <laughs> abandoned his belongings, tore out the pages from his diary in a frenzy, and became a monk. <laughs> Which one of these scenarios do you think is more likely? <laughs> Are 
I glared at him. That that was funny. Admit that it was funny. Your sarcasm is out of place. Nah, it's not. I'm always open for sarcasm. Come on, Killian. Don't know that super questions, Amala. Sir, be kind to me. I'm kind to you. We've all seen the same things. We all came to the same conclusion, which is upsetting, but also most likely. <laughs> Come down, Captain Lightwood. None of us are happy with the possibility that the diplomat has been kidnapped or worse. I am gonna stick to my theory that he was the blood sacrifice in the first scene of the story. Killian sighed heavily and softened his gaze as he looked at me. I apologize, Miss Khan. I'm confused and annoyed at being in this limbo. It's all good. I looked away as I tried I sighed tiredly ran my fingers through my hair. This case didn't look good. Turning away from the team I began pacing the room. I wanted to be alone with my thoughts to reflect on what we knew so far. Is this really what happened? Has the diplomat been kidnapped? But why? How long will we have to stay in Calcutta? And where is all this going to lead? Deep in thought, my gaze fell on the floor. I froze in place. What? My attention was drawn to something small and inconspicu- inconspicuous on the floor near the closet. At first I thought it was a rub- was rubbish. I knelt down and leaned in closer. It took me a moment to realize what I was looking at. That's... That's someone's fingernail. A small nail, a little dirty and stained with blood laid in front of the closet. We're gonna keep calm. It's fine, it's just a nail. It may be bloody, but still a nail. I swallowed quietly, fighting the urge to scream. There's... there's something here. I couldn't recognize my own voice. My colleagues fell silent, turning toward me. Without saying anything, I walked up to the closet, passed the nail, and opened its doors. Oh, wow. As if a werewolf would have been stuck in there. Now, that's not okay. The room was deafeningly quiet. Everyone stared at the closet. Someone had scrapped and clawed at the doors from the inside. Nail scratches covered most of the wooden surface. You could see several bloody streaks and fingerprints. What's this? Killian and Lima were already there, examining the nail on the floor and the scratch and the scratches on the closet doors. I could see the disgust and fear on their faces. Was that him? Did I do that? How obsessively would you have to scratch to rip off a nail? Ooh. Oh god, what a nightmare. Ratton stood silently behind us. He was staring at the closet and the carpet, considering something. What if it wasn't him? What if the diplomat wasn't the one who did it? We need to send the nail for testing, dust finger trim, fingerprints, and collect blood samples from the doors. So we'll know for sure. Yes, Miss Book. That's right. That's what needs to be done. Why is he freaking out? It seemed that even our team leader felt sick. He pulled a handkerchief out of his pocket and wiped his forehead. <laughs> oh, I can't. Mr. Weish, find a phone, please. Call your local police station and foreign sick experts. Tell them to collect everything here and send the samples to London as soon as possible. I'll give you the address of the lab. I don't trust local experts. <laughs> All right, I'll take care of it. Ratton left silently. I'm not feeling well. It's still very stuffy in here. I think I'll go into the hallway to get some fresh air. Killian looked at my pale, frightened face. Let's get out of here. We got everything we came for. Right, we're leaving. Mr. Rose staggered out the door, followed by Lima and Killian. What happened here? What a nightmare Mr. Hain had to go through. Was he attacked? Or maybe he went insane and scratched the doors? It was then that I realized that I was on my own in the room. 
I didn't want to be alone with this creepy closet, and the atmosphere had become heavy and uncomfortable. I wanted to get out of there right away. Aono took a few steps towards the door before my head started spinning. Oh. I became disorientated and staggered. No, no, don't faint. I reached for the wall and leaned against it awkwardly. Everything went dark for a moment. I closed my eyes trying to fight the dizziness. I counted to five and opened my eyes again. Oh my god, I am weak. I told you that we are the ones the, who are next. <laughs> I told you we are next. Oh my god. I started something again. Huh? Suddenly everything had changed. It was like I had been transported to another world. An airy red haze descended upon the room. Shadows were forming close to the floor. The room became hot and stuffy again. There wasn't enough air. I slowly slid down the wall, feeling my legs growing weaker. I could not speak, trapped in a mix of shock and surprise. I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. Oh, <laughs> people. The closet door slammed shut. <gasps> I tried to make a sound, but it felt as if sand had been poured down my throat. People, what is this? I can't with the tentacles. Shadows flickered on the walls. I shuddered but did not dare move. People, I was literally just attacked. <laughs> I was attacked. I was like, what is this? No, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, my God. What is this? There was a loud bang. The closet shook. What is this? Someone's shadow darted along the wall. It didn't make any sense. It could not possibly belong to anyone. I was completely alone in the room. But there were footsteps, clamoring blows, and other people's voices all around me. I felt as if I was at the epic epicenter of something, all the while sitting in an empty room. I'm just going to put a theory out there. Perhaps every single person that has these signs like the uh, I forgot again what he is I suck today I really do but uh, let me ignore it um, at the diplomat my god I would say every person has the same um reactions like diplomat and us like having the feeling that we're being followed and that never ever leaving us slowly going insane because we can hear things that no one else can are being i don't know i would just say miraculously are being brought in that exact bedroom to die there <laughs> I, am, I am done like i know what i just say sounds a little crazy but i hope you understand what i mean like she said that there are multiple shadows perhaps those are the souls of the people that died in that room like i don't know they checked in they fell asleep and then they uh, came to this uh, i don't know alternative universe and then they were murdered there i don't know used for blood sacrifices or something like that but there were footsteps clamoring blows and other people's voices all around me i felt as if i was at the epicenter of something all the while sitting in an empty room uh okay grandma you're making a lot of noise but it's all for nothing there are things that are inevitable, things that you are destined to happen. You could run, you could hide, and you'd still end up here. See? As in, I, I'm i gonna see it as other people, because there are multiple shadows in there. So I would say, we are one of the people that have been called upon. I'm just gonna say it like that. We have been called upon. This room is calling out for us, and no matter what we do or try, we cannot fight ending up in this situation right now. Like she tried to fight it, and we still ended up here. 
A second shadow appeared on the wall. It moved slowly, imposingly, as if there was no rush. It was as it already knew what was going to happen and didn't want to waste any energy chasing someone who would fall into its hands anyway. Both voices were male. Please, I'm not going to tell anyone a lie. I will lie. I swear on my life. Your life? Deep laughter rever reverberated through the room. You can't save your life either. Your life, your soul, your will. Everything belongs to her. To her? The first shadow wavered. It took off running. It took off running, attempting to escape. Still, it was just a shadow flickering on the wall. Something rattled along the wall where the first shadow was running. The second shadow had an object in its hand. A sickle-like object. Oh my god, oh my god. I clutched at my Saudi, oblivious to the fact that my hands were shaking. I couldn't take my eyes off the shadows, so I kept watching. Where are you running to? Any path will eventually lead to her. She is here and she is not going anywhere, because she's tired of waiting. Don't put it off any longer. Humbly accept what many dream of. Here? She's here? Can't you see? My chest grew cold and heavy, and I began to look around for the one they were talking about. I think they're talking about you, girl. I had the unsettling sensation that I wasn't alone, that someone was standing nearby watching me. Then everything happened so quickly. The first shadow dashed towards the exit door. Fall. The second shadow quickly caught up with its victim. It swung its sickle, and a dark crimson liquid splattered on me. The second shadow snatched the first, pulling it close. The victim whimmered and twitched. My hand. Here she is. Huh? Oh my god, people. <laughs> I am weak, people. Look at this. This is not for kids. An intense, hypnotic gaze seemed to be pointed right at me. I held my breath, not daring to break eye contact. She smiled. The smile was meant for me. What did I do now? The female silhouette disappeared. The second shadow dragged the first one to the door to leave the room. Right then, the door abruptly swung open. <gasps> Are we gonna get transported? Yes, thank you. Amala. Killen rushed over when he saw me lying on the floor, pale and terrified. Strong hands grabbed my shoulders. Killian carefully scanned the room before turning to face me. What happened, Amala? Why were you screaming? I I'm not feeling well. You're shaking. I awkwardly raised my trembling hand, and beads of sweat appeared on my skin. Please, let's get out of here. Killian remained silent as he helped me get up, holding me by my elbow. Path of loyalty. I looked at Killian gratefully as I leaned on him. Thank you. I'm not feeling well. I can see it. Trust me. I wanted to chuckle, but I couldn't. My mind was a mess. The ringing of other people's voices lingered in my ears, and I could still see the eerie smile when I closed my eyes. Killian slowly walked me to the door as I struggled to stay on my feet. I fin Finally, I glanced at the closet, open as if nothing had happened, and its frantically scratched doors. Lima and Mr. Rose were standing near the balcony, staring at the entrance to the diplomat's room. They clearly heard me screaming and looked very concerned. Raiton joined us right as Killian. Raiton joined us right away as Killian and I came out of the room. Everything taken care of, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Miss Khan. Are you? My heart was racing and everyone was waiting to know what happened. Keep you cool. I took a deep breath, straightening my back and looked at my colleagues. I hid my trembling hands behind my back and forced a smile. Everything's fine. An outright lie. But no one was going to take me seriously if I gave in to emotions and hysteria so easily, so I needed to keep my cool. The door slammed shut. I couldn't open it and got scared. It was so stuffy in there. We thought something happened to you. Something did happen, but she doesn't want to tell you. 
Killian raised his eyebrows at my calm response. Less than a minute ago, I was shaking in fear on the floor. Amala, you came out of there looking as pale as a ghost. Are you really fine? Yes, thank you for your concern, Lima. I screamed for you to hear me and not leave me accidentally locked up in the room alone. No one's buying it. Lima clearly didn't believe me. <laughs> Literally. Lima, iconic. You're an icon. But no one tried to argue with me. If anything, my colleagues seemed impressed by my ability to keep my emotions in check and looked at me with respect. Respect, people. Earn the respect. Are you sure you're fine? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Di Mr. Vaish. So listen up, everyone. The team leader decided to shift the sh focus of attention away from me and back to our case. After recapping the information we gathered, Mr. Rose let us go home. We didn't have much time to do until the lab tests were ready. Killian, Lima, and Mr. Rose could just go to their rooms. Mr. Vaish offered to take me to the Chao Han's house in a taxi. Killian wanted to take me personally. Oh, Killian. I love this man. But I convinced him to rest instead. The day was finally drawing to a close. A frick. A fragrant smell filled the room. Sana set the table and served dinner. Our plates were filled to the brim with all the food the cook prepared. I couldn't tell if this was a regular dinner for the Chao Hans or if they were trying to impress me. I wasn't hungry and didn't pay attention to the food. Amala, honey, you didn't even touch your plate. You don't like it. Of course I like it, Mr. Chao Han. Ms. Chao Han. I'm just not hungry. How so? That's nonsense. Come on, eat something. Those who are hungry miss out on good complexion. Here, have some curry and rice. I'll wrap it in a roti for you. It'll be even more delicious. Come on, you can't say no to that. You can't say no to that cuteness. Priyanka be began heaping curry into the roti, which seemed like it was about to burst from all the filling. Merodil. What are you doing to our guest? She can eat later if she doesn't want it now. Take this, Sana, and bring it to Amala's room. Mr. Dilly is a term of endearment in India. Oh, Priyanka shook her head in disapproval, but Aryan just smiled. Although I was still rattled, Priyanka's motherly presence made me smile. I'll eat everything before bed, I promise. Dear God, she's going to eat right before bed. Oh, Aryan laughed cheerfully. I love them. They're cute. Please don't let them betray us. I collapsed on the bed and closed my eyes exhausted. My mind was instantly flooded with memories of the day. I'm so confused. I can't even understand what I saw. What was that? What happened there? How could it have happened? Where did these voices come from? Why did the closet door slam shut on their own? I got lost in the never-ending stream of questions in my head. I don't understand what's happening to me. There's absolutely no one I can talk to about this. As soon as I say anything, my colleagues will immediately assume I'm crazy. I wouldn't have believed in it myself. Girl, but if you are experiencing the same things, they can technically use what you're going through in order to help the case. I sat on the edge of the bed, remembering those eyes. Who was that? Why did they stare at me? I knocked on the door. A knock on the door made me jump. Sana? Yeah. Sana appeared in the doorway. Excuse me, miss. There's a phone call for you. Who's calling? I didn't ask. I got out of bed and followed the maid into the hallway. I went to the landline and I was about to pick up the phone when I noticed Sana staring at me. What is it? Me shouldn't wear her nightwear outside the room. The maid left. My pajamas are bothering everyone in this house. I picked up the phone. Hello, Amala Khan speaking? Killian. Killian. You're a sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. You're a softie. Admit it. Are you always so serious when you pick up the phone? Yes. Captain Lightwood? Good evening. Oh, I'm so happy to hear from you. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened in that room, but you look terrified. So I'm calling to see if you're fine. 
Aww. Thank you. I'm feeling much better. I'm not going to push you to tell me what happened, but if you ever feel like talking about this or anything else, you can always come to me. Aww. Killian called because he's worried about you. Yeah, I could tell already. No, that's that's cute. He was like, if you if you have if you have tr struggles, if you're struggling with something, if you need to get something off your chest, please don't forget that I'm here. Love it. I felt slightly embarrassed. Thank you, Captain Lightwood. That's very kind of you. Now he's gonna say, call me Killian. It's okay, we're on the same team. I don't want anything to distract you from your work. If he does that one day, I'm gonna scream. I see. That's all I wanted to say. See you tomorrow. Good night, Amala. Good night, Captain Lightwood. Killian hung up. Interesting. Turns out Killian isn't that bad. Hey, you always gotta give people the benefit of the doubt. The phone call left me with mixed feelings, but most importantly, it distracted me from my thoughts and stopped me from going insane. Time to go to bed. My brain works much better in the morning. Lies. Mine doesn't. I saw Sana coming up the stairs. She was carrying a food tray. Miss Khan, I'm bringing you dinner. I'm on the strict orders to bring you something to eat. I can guess who ordered it. Bring it here, please. Has your appetite returned? A little bit. The maid served me a simple meal. Oh, no, they're so cute. Not the coffee cup. I was about to go back to my room when I heard Sana's voice behind me. Tell me what's on your mind, girl. That something happened to you today? What do you mean? The maid shrugged, but her gaze remained serious. You were unusually pale when you came home and didn't touch your food at dinner. Just some trouble at work, that's all. I warned you to be careful and stick with your attache. Huh? I don't think you have any idea about what happened to me. Are you sure about that? Oh gosh, is, he ha is she having the same symptoms? Captain Lightwood couldn't have helped me. So it's even worse than I thought. Is she having the same thing? For some reason, her words startled me. I squeezed the tray tighter. What are you talking about? I warned you that bad things were going to happen. The deeper you'll go, the more you'll discover. A creak of floorboards came from somewhere down the hallway. We both turned quickly in the direction of the noise, but all was silent again. Someone overheard your conversation. Uh-uh. It's not safe to talk here. I can only tell you more if you tell me about what happened to you today. If you don't want to talk about it any longer, I'll leave. I'll tell you everything. For some reason, I feel like you're the only one who's going to believe me. I don't think so. Let's see what you think after you hear everything. Sen and I headed to my room to avoid talking in the hallway. When we got to my room, I told Zana what happened in the diplomat's hotel room. I tried to avoid describing my emotions by focusing only on the facts. I told her about the voices, the shadows, and how things moved on their own. And about how I seemed to go back in time, because even the room looked different. I only left out one detail, the female shadow and her gaze. You decided to share your vision. The choice will affect the future. Miss... What you've just described is incredible. I knew you wouldn't believe me. No, I do believe you, but things aren't looking good right now. Huh? I don't know what exactly your strange vision means, but one thing I know for sure, you can see more than ordinary people. What do you mean? Your perception is more powerful than regular people. An invisible way separates us from the other world. But you can peer past it to see what many eyes are unable to perceive. One could say that you are closer to the other world than most other people. You're not alone. Some Brahim, some Brahims also have strong connection with the spiritual realm. Are we some sort of avatar? We're capable to uh, go to the spirit world. Aren't Brahims the highest caste in India? Experts in the Vedas and other sacred texts? Yes, miss. They are respected and admired. And admired. 
and those descended from the ancient Ibrahim lineage, whose ancestors passed on their knowledge from generation to generation, can perceive much more than ordinary people. But my family is not Brahim ni. Bram, Brahmin? There were regular people who left India. What could have caused my vision then? I'm afraid I can't answer your question, miss. I know very little about this. I only told you what I know. I was confused. This was not very helpful. Really? At least now you know you're not crazy. There's a reason you saw what you did. You just need to dig deeper. But it could be dangerous right now. Why? The maid paced the room with her hands clasped behind her back. Trouble is ahead. It's especially dangerous for those who can perceive more than most people. Brahmins who studied the sacred Indian texts and know more about than most get ready for this period in advance. If you're not ready, you could go insane. Why? Calcutta's two major Indian holidays, Turga Puja and Kali Puja, are, are coming. The festivals honoring the two incarnations of the same revered, beloved, and powerful goddess. And why is this period considered dangerous? The veil between the words are thinning, is thinning. The divine is getting closer to us. Positive and negative energies, the energy of death, tantric rituals, the power of karma. The fall of sacred energy of the Maya. All is amplified, affecting us to a greater extent. Those who are most susceptible to this sh should mentally prepare themselves. Otherwise, the abundance of visions, information, and energy will drive a person insane. I frowned and shook my head. Hold on, you're acting as if all this is real. Sana looked at me surprised. Don't you believe in this? Aren't you a Hindu, miss? No, Hinduism is something like mythology to me. In London, where I grew up, most people follow another religion. I didn't ask you about everyone else. What is your soul telling you? My soul is silent. The maid kept staring at me. Isn't what happened to you today causing you to question your beliefs? Not enough for me to believe in Shiva, Ganesha... Parvati and everyone else. Well, I think that will happen next will make you think it over more than once. What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. <laughs> She's like, you don't want to believe in gods? You don't want to believe in the gods of India? Then the next events are going to brand mark you. And I will not feel sorry. I am done. I will tell. You will see for yourself that everything is far more complicated than as they believe. This conversation took a strange turn. Just be careful. My colleagues will always be there for me. And they will, but they can't protect you from that. I don't need help. I'll be careful. I'm just gonna say, why not? My colleagues will always be there for me. I believe they will help me when things get tough. Plus two loyalty. Oh, wonderful. Joining forces can be very helpful in some situations. Sana, how did you come to know so much about this? My parents used to work for Brahim family. I learned a lot from them. Those people were not Brahmins. Yet they belonged to that case by birthright. The maid paused, glancing at her watch. Oh, it's pretty late. Enjoy your dinner, miss. I'll get the try tomorrow. Sana headed out of the room. I watched her leave. I just wanted to learn more and get some answers, but I only got more confused. Sana must be mistaken. I'm not from a Brahim family, and I never had any special connection with the other world. Besides, I've never experienced anything like this before coming here. Then what's the deal with the vision? Okay, there's no need to fill my head with such ideas right before bed. Or I'll see something weird again. <laughs> I quickly ate my dinner and went to bed. I fell asleep instantly. My body seemed to be in desperate need of a re reboot after the stress it had endured.
Voices and laughter coming from the first floor woke me up. The chow hunts were already up, and the house smelled like freshly baked cakes. I glanced at the clock. It was late bef- and late morning, so I jumped out of the bed and rushed to the bathroom. Damn. If I'm late, Rose will never let me hear the end of it. I have to get ready and run. I opened the closet today. I wanted to wear something casual. Okay. Honestly, I prefer this one. But fine. Well, we go with this. Why not? I look fantastic. Mm, let's go with this. I went downstairs and followed the voices to the living room. Good morning, Amala. Good morning, Miss Khan. Mrs. Cohan was sitting on the couch with a cup of tea in her hand. One of on the coffee table was a tray with a teapot and candy. Good morning, Miss Cohan. Sana, has anyone called me on the phone? No, Miss. No one called and no one visited. All right then. Sit down, sweetheart. Have some tea. There are fresh cakes in the dining room. Priyanka looked at me admiringly. Amala, what a beauty you are. A rice sack would look as great on you as a beautiful sari. I laughed shyly. Thank you. Miss, can I get you some cakes to go with your tea? Yes, please. Thank you, Sana. The maid left the living room. She acted as if our conversation yesterday never happened. I don't think it's great to, like, be so obvious about that, so... I could be convinced that I'm hallucinating. Maybe our conversation was just a dream. No. Oops. Sorry. I think she said how long are you going to stay here? I'm not sure, but it looks like it will be a while. The woman nodded after taking a sip of her tea. I really want you to stay here to enjoy the festivals. They're always so much fun. You will love India even more after you take part in our holidays. There's music, songs and rituals. Everything is colorful and beautiful. Festivals. First is Durga Buja, one of India's most colorful and well-loved festivals. Then there is Kali Puja, which is a local holiday that we celebrate here in West Bengal. Okay, yesterday's conversation was definitely not a dream. When do these festivals start? Miss Khan. Suddenly the maid appeared in the living room, looking slightly worried. Huh? You have a visitor. She seems agitated, but I don't understand English well enough to find out what's the matter. She? I got up from the couch and quickly headed to the front door. Is it our beautiful redhead? Yes, outside I saw Lima, who really did look nervous. Amala, come here quickly. I ran up to her. What happened? Hurry, get into the taxi. There's a mess going on at work. Please explain me. What's going on? Lightwood and Rose didn't want to call you and let you know. They were afraid you hadn't yet recovered after yesterday. I was furious. How can they make this decision for you? I got distracted for just a minute talk- talking to Mr. Vaish. And then I realized that Lightwood and Rose had already left. Outrageous. I immediately rushed here to get you. I grabbed Lima's hand to get her to focus on me. Lima, what's the matter? What's going on? Lima just started, stared at me for a few moments, then pulled herself together and said, A man's body was discovered by the police near our embassy. We need to head there as soon as possible. A chilling thought crossed my mind. Was that the diplomat? No. Thank goodness. Then what do we have to do with this? I realized that the diplomat's disappearance was a complicated case. Captain Lightwood contacted the local police through a guide. They agreed to report all murderers, murders that occurred under usual cir- unusual circumstances. They must cooperate with our task force whether they like it or not. But why do we need to know about unusual murders? Killian is just a pessimist. Same. I see. So our colleagues went to the crime scene. What makes it so special? 
मैं सारे चोल मारता हाँ The one that died at the very end. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say that I think in the spirit world, we're that evil girl. I mean, she does look like... <laughs> Let me stop. Okay, that was episode three. And honestly, the spirit world kind of shook me. But it literally shook me to my core. Like I can't. But I still think it was interesting. I think it's very interesting, actually. So the, uh, my theory was apparently wrong. The diplomat has not been found yet. And the one that was used for the ritual it was someone else and not the diplomat. Okay. Well... I like this episode. I really did. And I love that um, Killian let us know that he actually is worried about us. I mean, I already knew, but hey, it never hurts to say it twice. Yeah, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.